So today marks five months since starting the role as a trainee clinical associate psychologist. And I know some of you have been asking about the course, the program, and also asking for some updates in regards to what I've been doing as a CAP. So in this video, I'll be using the term CAPS and CAP basically uh, symbolizes clinical associate psychologist. Instead of saying that word, again and again, I'm gonna be referring to CAP. So stay tuned if you want to know a bit more in terms of what I've been doing over the last five months. Hi there, so before we actually get into this video, I would like to remind you that subscription is free. So make sure you like, comment and subscribe and let's get this conversation going. My year is actually the first cohort to actually have a CAPS program, which is 18 months. So this is the first of its kind, and this course is an apprenticeship. So with a CAP role, you're basically working um, in clinical work, but also you're studying at the university, and it's over the span of 18 months. So a week could be like, you know, Monday to Wednesday, working with clinical work and during COVID, that could be, you know, meeting patients online through videos, doing wellbeing calls and things like that. And then on Thursday, it's dedicated to lectures. And then Friday is either a study day or sometimes we may have a lecture in there. Or we also might have things like group work and doing something called uh, PBL, which is problem based learning. So that is generally what a CAP program is. And because of the apprenticeship, as you're working and as you're studying, you're actually paid a full salary. Um, so your fees are covered in terms of university. And also as you're working, it's kind of like in a typical apprenticeship where you're actually working and learning, but you're being paid as you're going through the process. So I thought it would be useful to just walk you through what has happened so far as it's only been five months. Five months is a very short time. So I'm just going to cover this in terms of the introduction and also things that I'm currently doing as this is five months it's surely gone so quickly and that means that on this program we have 13 months left in terms of this apprenticeship and after it finishes it will be full-time work and um, we won't be studying as well so starting from November I believe I started on the first week of November and this basically was introduction week so at this time we were able to meet with our other colleagues and we had like an introduction in terms of the CAP program, the future of CAPS and also like an overview in terms of the area where we'll be doing this program and also why there is this rise in terms of needing CAPS, needing clinical associate psychologists. So that is what happened in the early stages of this CAP program. We had introductions and because of COVID as well, um, in terms of like when you start a job with the NHS you tend to have online things such as courses you have to do like safeguarding and all of that so these were things that I was needed to do in the first couple weeks in order to basically start the job so um, the first parts was introduction meeting my other peers who are also in the cohort and also having this time of doing the online introductions which are required for working within the NHS. And then after that, in the month of November, I think it was probably the third week in, in terms of November, we now had introductions with university. I know I mentioned before how universities tend to be on a Thursday, but because this was like an introduction, we had a full week of university for I think about two weeks and this was like just getting to know the course, getting to know the subjects and you see like when you're starting university you tend to have an introductory uh, lecture to all the modules so that is how um, November was for us. The thing to note as well is that even though there may be like let's just say 27 or 25 or 30 people who are hired as CAPS you do not work in the same um, place like for example you can have the same area 
but everyone is split up into different teams. So 27 of us, I think we're split up into five teams. So in my team, there is five of us and we're working in a certain team and other people are just working in different areas of where I'm based. So because of this, we then had our individual introductions on the team that will be based in the specific area that I'm based. So this was basically me getting to know the team or and meeting the team and um, also being introduced. Um, I think it was the morning meeting as well where we met some of them afterwards as well. We joined the MDT team and then we had further introductions to the rest of the team members. So for the first month, it was mostly introduction, getting to know the team. So if you've worked with the NHS, I meant to say introductory things that you have to do, you've probably already done it. So if you have just come from an NHS job and you're going through this job, you might not do it. So that was basically the summary of 2020, mostly introductions and familiarizing ourselves with the team and things like that. And then in 2021, so because of COVID, you know, we there was an, an initiative to basically check up on people and we basically just call them, seeing how they're doing. And after that, we would basically report that. So we use a software called Rio and that's what we're doing. So as of time, it then switched from a well-being call. We got some patients to do Silver Cloud. And Silver Cloud, in summary, is basically like online CBT. So during this time, it was like finding relevant service users that would be um, suitable for a Silver Cloud and would benefit from Silver Cloud. So this is what was happening, um, I would say, in the early stages of the new year. After that, it now went to like CBT cases. So we were all allocated individual service users or patients depending on what word you like to use and um, we started assessment so with this it means that for some of us we're doing well-being calls silver cloud and having patients who may be suitable for CBT um, as the lockdown is kind of coming to an end it might mean that the well-being calls don't continue so on this role now doing assessments on patients that I've been allocated to doing um, assessments and also in some of these assessments because everyone's different you know some assessments may be that I'm basically now introducing them to the model of CBT so in summary this is basically what I would say I've been doing since the last five months and also on the university side because I honestly forgot to mention that so on the university side we have had some assignments but those assignments have haven't been so far geared to our, our overall grade I think our first I think it's called a formative assignment is due in, in May so that is currently what we're working to so the group work I talked about in terms of a PBL we're working towards that and then from there it seems like um, we're going to have more assignments that are regular so we're working Monday to Wednesday in terms of the clinical side so that consists of patient work assessments now silver cloud and well-being calls and then Thursday is university and then Friday is mostly working with my team um, filling out the things we need to do in terms of the apprenticeship course we have something called one file where we have to log in the out of done out of work so that is how like a week will look like in terms of a clinical associate psychologist and because it's five months I would say you know five months is a short time and um, it would be probably useful maybe when the courses end just to give a summary and to share as well the further things that I learned um because I'm still quite in the early stages as well but as you guys have asked you know I thought it'd be nice to just give you a summary of what CAPS have been doing the experience of a CAP in five months so hope you enjoyed this video if you have any other video ideas make sure you comment below and if you like videos in terms of psychology education health and well-being and finance be sure to subscribe because this is what this channel is about i want to inspire people as well especially in their journeys to psychology later have a lovely day and i hope you enjoy the rest of your holidays so see you later mm -hmm.